Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day and a great week. Today's topic is going to be transport in plants. It's just an introduction to the topic. So we're just going to look at the gist or the crux of the topic as well as certain details that come in the start of the chapter. So let's just get right on to it. So the first part is the a difference between root and shoot system. So basically in flowering plants, what's the difference between root system and shoot system and what are their functions respectively? So let's talk about the root system first. So the root system uh, consists of an underground system of roots that hold onto the soil and prevent it from washing away. So it prevents the plant from drooping or swaying sideways when wind blows across it. So the roots firmly grip onto the soil and prevent the plant from washing or swaying away when either wind or rain blows over it. It allows for storage units for starch. When it comes to the root system, some of the starch that is produced as a product of photosynthesis is stored in the roots. The root also absorbs water and mineral salts, allowing the xylem to carry them up the plant to the leaves and other parts of the plant. The root has roots. Basically, the root system has root hairs that are long and allow for maximum absorption of water and mineral salts so that it can be transported via the xylem to other parts of the plant such as the leaf. So, the root system basically consists of roots and uh, other parts of the roots that are underground systems that consist of roots that firmly hold onto the soil and prevent the plant from swaying or washing away when rain or wind blows over it. It allows for storage units uh, for starch, let's say, and it also uh, absorbs water and mineral salts by having large and uh, maximum absorbing root hairs that absorb water and mineral salts. Shoot system. Now the shoot system has an upright stem, leaves and buds. The shoot system basically is above the ground. So root system is below the ground, shoot system is above the ground. The shoot system consists of two types of buds lateral bud and terminal bud. The lateral bud is supposed to be on the side of the stem. So the lateral bud is on the side of the stem. The terminal bud however is in the middle of the stem. So it's basically the central bud. So the bud that is at the tip of the stem is the terminal bud. The bud that is at the side of the stem is the lateral bud. Right, moving on to the next one, we have the basic parts of the leaf that are like epidermis or, you know, vascular bundles, etc. So, from previous videos, I think you probably know that epidermis is a layer of single cells that are closely fitting. They are a layer of single cells that are closely fitting that reduce water loss. Because they are closely fitting, they basically have less surface area to allow for water loss and thus they reduce the amount of evaporation that takes place uh, from the plant. Now this helps in the process of photosynthesis as it also consists of a waxy layer called cuticle which allows for light to easily uh, get absorbed because it's transparent and also prevents water loss. So function of the epidermis is that epidermis allows for light to be absorbed into the palisade mesophyll cells as it has a transparent layer coating and it also has a waxy layer called cuticle that is waterproof to prevent water from escaping or to uh, basically decrease the amount of water loss that occurs in a plant. Now the main concept of transport in plants is the vascular bundles. Vascular bundles allow for transport in plants and there are two types mainly, xylem and phloem. The xylem transports water and mineral salts only. Phloem transports food material like glucose which is produced as a result of photosynthesis. So if we revise Vascular bundles are two types mainly xylem and phloem. Xylem transports water and mineral salts and phloem transports food material like glucose. Now looking at the first part we have xylem. 
Xylem is made out of long, elongated cells that are called vessels. Vessels are a series of long cells joined end to end where its end walls are digested away to form the xylem. So rather you have this sort of structure over here that initially has end walls. Now these end walls are digested away. These end walls are digested away to form the xylem. Now, when it is digested away, it forms a smooth passageway for water to move through. That is what forms the xylem. So, vessels are a series of long cells that are joined end to end, but these have end walls that are digested away to form a long tube that allows for passage of water, and this is known as xylem. So, xylem is also impregnated with a waterproof material called lignin. So, impregnated basically means it is coated with a waterproof material called lignin. There are a few functions of lignin. So firstly, lignin is a waterproof material. So if we think about this, when lignin is waterproof, it prevents the water from uh, causing wear and tear to the xylem. So it prevents the wear and tear of the xylem when water has to be pulled up big trees. When it has to be pulled up big trees, it requires a lot of force due to which it doesn't allow the water forced to tear the xylem vessels. Now, second thing is that lignin is a very hard and strong material that coats the xylem, that coats the inner side of the xylem. And that strengthens the vessel and prevents it from drooping when rain or wind, uh, you know, flows over it. Now, another thing is that it prevents free passage of water. So a few functions of the lignin are that it strengthens the vessel and prevents it from drooping in cases of rain and wind. It prevents wear and tear of the uh, xylem when water flows with high speed up through the xylem and it also prevents free passage of water. The phloem. Now phloem is alive. Uh, so let's just go back to the previous case where we talk about xylem. In a xylem, the uh, cells that are conducting cells are actually dead. So in this case, xylem cells are actually dead and their end walls are digested. But when we look at phloem, conducting cells in a phloem remain alive. And these uh, you know, cells that remain alive are basically the sieve tubes. So conducting cells in a phloem remain alive to form sieve tubes. Like the vessels form in xylem, there are perforations that appear in the sieve tube end walls that allow the food to actually move through. So let's draw a diagram here. Over here, end walls are kept. The end walls are not digested. And over here in the end walls, you have perforations. Perforations basically means that you have holes in it. You have holes and these holes allow the food material to pass through. Food material is usually a very solid material and it is large food particles. So it needs to have like those gaps to allow the food for free passage of, you know, the food to pass through either upward or downward. So there are holes or perforations in the end walls in the phloem that allow food to pass either in upward or downward direction. Now, the end walls uh, that contain perforations are known as sieve plates. Cytoplasm and cell contents don't die and perforated end walls are called sieve plates. Companion cells. Companion cells provide proteins, ATP and support to the phloem and keep the stem upright. These are the companion cells. So, let's just look at this. These are the companion cells. Now, you don't necessarily need to know a lot about this, but just remember that companion cells help support the phloem, keep the stem upright, provide proteins and energy to the phloem for transportation of food. Function of the vascular bundles. Now, when we talk about xylem and phloem, we mentioned that phloem only transports, uh, so phloem transports food in both directions. Phloem transports food in both directions, whereas xylem only does it in one direction, that is in the upward direction. So why is this the case? Now, in a phloem, food may either travel upward or downward, the stem, from the leaf, where it is made, called the source, to where it is stored, called the sink. So 
here phloem in the phloem basically it may either travel upward or downward and the movement of food occurs from the source to the sink from the source to the sink source is where the food is made or where the food is produced and sink is where the food is stored now vascular bundles have the uh, you know function of both supporting as well as transporting material either upward or downward direction for phloem and only in the upward direction for xylem now due to the presence of lignified and elongated walls it provides support for the plant this helps prevent the stem from bending when wind flows over it a network of veins in the leaf support the mesophyll tissue and prevent it from tearing as well so if we revise just remember that phloem transports food in both directions either upward or downward from the source where it is produced to the sink where it is stored and a xylem transports food only in the upward direction right the next part is really important this is the difference between cortex and pith now the tissue between vascular bundles and epidermis is called cortex cortex is the tissue between vascular bundles and epidermis and it stores starch so the function of cortex is to store starch the central tissue of stem is called the pith so over here this region is the pith and this region right here is the cortex so the ones in the side region of the side that actually provides support cortex provides support is what uh, you know the side region is cortex and this middle region is the pith cells of the cortex and pith act as packing tissues and help support the stem that forms the rigid structure for the plant so in this case just remember that cortex is a tissue between vascular bundle and epidermis and it's it's stores starch so in this case um, cortex stores starch and it is a tissue between epidermis and vascular bundle the pith is a central tissue of the uh, stem or the cross section of the plant stem now the last thing is that the difference between xylem and phloem in diagrams especially xylem is usually on the outside of the vascular bundle so it is near the periphery or the side of the uh, vascular bundle over here as you can see this is the xylem outside and phloem is usually on the inside so the this is the phloem right here xylem is on the outside and phloem is on the inside all right that will be all for today hope you enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe and i will see you in the next video so thank you for watching bye